Good evening. We're here with Representative Gail Tarlington, who is running for Secretary of State. Would you like to go ahead with your two minute introduction? Good evening, 36 District Democrats. Uh, thank you for making time out of all of our all of our days that uh, give us a chance to actually remember this election may be the one most important election I know in my lifetime. And I never expected to be running for a statewide office uh, without being able to go out and meet people to run against a Secretary of State who is a two-term incumbent. I am Gail Tarleton. I am really proud to be a member of the 36th District Democrats. I have been since 2007. And I am running for Secretary of State for one very specific reason. We need to secure our elections against any kind of interference, and we must protect our right to vote, resisting any kind of voter suppression, any kind of voter data release that is inappropriate, and we have to do it in this election year. And I wish I had been running for Secretary of State in 2016, but I was not. And here we are in 2020, and our current Secretary of State has continued to refuse to denounce President Trump and his invitation to the Russians and the Chinese to interfere in our elections. She will not denounce voter suppression occurring all over the country in all of these states. She would not denounce what happened in Wisconsin when literally people risked their lives to go to the polls in order to cast their vote. I can't imagine what is going to potentially happen in this state and in this country in these elections in 2020 if we actually have another attempted attack on our elections from the Russians. Just last week, the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee issued a bipartisan unanimous assessment that in fact the Obama administration's assessment in 2016 that the Russians were trying to interfere in our democracy to undermine the integrity of our elections outcomes and to call into question the legitimacy of our elections, they issued a report run by Richard Burr, the Republican Senator Chair, who said, they all said, yes, the Russians were interfering in 2016 to undermine our elections and they are doing it still and they are doing it now. Tarleton, your time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Robert has posted some questions into the chat box. And um, I have Constance next on my list. Constance, would you like to go ahead with the first one? Um, the responses to these are two minutes apiece. Yes, I would. Hello, good evening. Hi there. Question, hi. <laughs> question one, what is your position on ranked choice voting? I support ranked choice voting options by local jurisdictions so that we can s explore in the state which kinds of jurisdictions really need to introduce ranked choice voting to encourage voter turnout, to make sure there are candidates running on the ballot, that there is an opportunity to overcome perhaps voter suppression or lack of voter registration uh, efforts underway in different jurisdictions. You know, I. Uh, I have been really looking at this issue because I wanted to see how it evolved in different parts of the state. There are a couple of places that have been exploring it. And so I co-sponsored the legislation that was in front of the, uh, the legislature this year. Uh, I, it was in the House uh, State Government Committee and it did have a hearing. It did not get out of the committee uh, because it was really a, the first time that a major piece of legislation had been introduced. And I'm sure due to the shorter session uh, that there was a, a sense that we needed to explore it One in more detail. And then we tried to get a budget proviso into the budget in 2020. I, I, sponsored a budget proviso request, we did not get it funded. If I am Secretary of State, I will support having at least a budget proviso next year. If not a piece of legislation, I will support legislation to do pilot projects in those counties that want to explore how they can implement ranked choice voting. Thank you. Uh, Layla, are you available to um, tackle question two? I know she's participating by telephone, so it's a little bit ah, different. Okay. Um, Jason, would you like to go ahead with question two? Uh, yeah. Um, 
What is your position on moving all elections to even year cycle? I really want to figure out how we can consolidate the elections of the junior taxing districts, what we have sometimes called in this state special purpose districts, uh, the water and sewer districts, the fire districts, the uh, conservation districts, the hospital districts. These are uh, very difficult races to uh, run and very difficult elections to conduct because they are countywide. And they are that sometimes it cuts across two counties or three counties in other parts of the state besides King County. And so the idea of consolidating elections into election years could save a lot of money. I am not convinced yet though, that it is the way to increase voter turnout. If the objective is to increase voter turnout and to avoid voter fatigue, and I think that that was one of the main cases made with the legislation that was introduced this year, what I'd like to see one is minute. whether or not that voter turnout is due to having to vote too much and people don't understand what is at stake in these uh, jurisdictions where we are electing water and sewer commissioners or hospital administrators, or whether it's because we need to do a better job of voter education and outreach about the role that these jurisdictions play in our local control sort type of government. And so I want to explore this idea with the state party and with the state committee chairs in the House and the Senate, because I really wanna know how it fits into our broader goal of getting eligible voters to register to vote, registered voters to turn out and vote. And if that is one way we can explore turning out the vote, along with ranked choice seconds. voting, I'm all in. Thank you. Uh, Mackenzie, would you like to ask question three? Sure. Hello, Representative Tarleton. Uh, Hello. Hi. Uh, do you support voting rights for all, including incarcerated and formerly incarcerated people? I do. I thought really hard about this over the last several years, and I, I talked to um, Tina Orwall and Roger Goodman and, and John Lovick, who are my, they're my core on the Public Safety Committee. I, I really trust uh, their understanding of, of what it means to deny people their right to vote, regardless of the situation in which they are finding themselves, whether they are formally incarcerated or currently. It is my view that they are residents, and if they are registered to vote, they are voters who are eligible to vote. And no matter what other rights they may have had taken away during the time that they are incarcerated, I don't think incarceration actually denies the right to vote. And that is what I have concluded from reading the Constitution, looking at our statutory laws. This is so fundamental to our constitutional right that just because they are incarcerated does not mean they have been incarcerated and therefore are unable to exercise a constitutional right to vote. So I, I have supported education while incar incarcerated, education in the post-incarceration period, and I will support the right to vote for all who are incarcerated and are eligible to vote. Thank you. Uh, Brittany, would you like to take question four? Do you support the creation of a small donor public financing program for statewide and legislative representative and senator elections? Yes. Uh, so democracy vouchers uh, proved to me in these Seattle elections in the last, I don't know, have we had it two cycles? I forget. Uh, but they, they are proving to me that more people are participating in the election process, that they are, if they are not running for office, then they're paying attention to the races. If they're not, uh, if they're not actively involved in a campaign, uh, when they have someone doorbell or when they have someone phone bank and they learn more about a candidate, uh, they are participating. They are saying, I want to take a stake in participating in who gets elected and how we handle big money in politics. And basically that's what it's coming down to for me. We can't overturn Citizens United with this Supreme Court that we have. 
and we sure as heck can't overturn it with having the legislature repeal it uh, unless we flip the Senate and hold the House. And so my view of big money in politics is get as many small donors into the system as we possibly can and make the big money as transparent and exposed as we possibly can. And so I am supporting anything that em emphasizes small donors have to be part of the equation. I am not taking any corporate or corporate PAC money for this race that I am in right now. It is entirely individual and organization focused because we've got to get the big money on the sidelines. Great, thank you. And now we'll open it up to questions uh, from the floor. Uh, the responses to these are one minute, so one minute apiece. Um, one minute. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna physically raise my hand. Um, mm -hmm. So you talked a little bit in your intro about uh, election security, and I know that that's one of the things you're passionate about. So could you please tell us a little bit more about your plans and uh, for making our election secure? Thank you, Alice. I have a long background in national security work. And while in the legislature, I have pushed for election security legislation for the past three years, knowing that Russian interference is a real deal. It is not a myth and it's not a hoax. And we have to tackle it with really serious policy. This year, after three years, I finally got my election securities legislation passed, uh, signed into law by the governor uh, a month ago. And what it does, is it sets up an incident command structure so that our governor, seconds. attorney general, secretary of state, and local officials will know what to do when we have an attack. We need much more of that kind of work being done, and I will pursue it. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Uh, Lori, are you? Where's Lori? Where did she go? Where you are. <laughs> Hi, Rep. Tarleton. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I, I see Washington being held out as an example of vote by mail success nationally. They, they talk about us a lot. What do you say to detractors who are arguing that vote by mail is vulnerable to voter fraud? As Secretary of State, how do you ensure um, that that is not the case? Uh, great question, and I have one minute to answer. So our Secretary of State has not taken the opportunity to defend our vote by mail system by any stretch, as Trump has attacked it and as the Republican secretaries of state in Iowa and Georgia have attacked it, she has said, said to the national media, you know, it took us 10 years to implement it in Washington state. I think it would be a little risky to be adopted in these other states during this election cycle. In other words, take another 10 years and figure it out. No, we have absentee voting in every single state we need election boxes in every single state for this election, and we absolutely need to allow voters to vote by mail. It's not the ballot seconds. in the mail that's at risk, it's the networks and the data files, and that's what the Russians are attacking. They are trying to get into our voter data, and they are trying to get into our networks, so we don't believe that the results of our election are legitimate. Thank you. Thank you. Mackenzie. Sure, thank you. Uh, a question for you. So I think a lot of folks would probably agree that we have it pretty good here with our elections with, uh, the, for example, the mail-in voting being able to do that. Um, and perhaps even, I would even say a lot of folks on the other side of the aisle probably feel the same way about that. And uh, so my question to you is, and especially to like the more rural places or even in Eastern Washington, uh, what is your game plan to try to uh, bring in some of those voters to your ideas and to elect you uh, against an incumbent that's been successful a couple of times. A few things I'd like to say about that. Number one, I am I am concentrating as much as I can of turning out the Democratic vote in the most monstrous blue wave we have ever seen. And I am not kidding people. That is not, it's not my job to appeal to Republicans to vote for me. It's my job to make sure Democrats feel like it's worth firing the incumbent and taking on a new person to deal with the future needs of this state. Elections are critical, essential public duties. 30 seconds. And we have taken them for granted and we can't do that anymore. On the other hand, all of the legislation I've passed in the legislature regarding election security has been monstrously bipartisan. So some of these people are gonna vote for me. 
Great, thank you. Brittany. Thanks, Gail. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk about ideas you might have for increasing access to and participation in voting uh, in our tribal nations. Uh, great. The, uh, the tribal communities are strongly supporting my campaign because with Secretary of State that they have today, they have hit a literal brick wall. She will not explore how to help the local auditors fund ballot boxes at the various uh, tribal locations and on the, on the reservation lands and in areas where people actually live and can get. To. Uh, the other reason that the tribes are supporting me is that they know that we in the legislature controlled by the Democratic majority are the reason why we have a Voting Rights Act and a Native American Voting Rights Act, by the way, that we passed. They have that because of us, not because of the Secretary of State. She has opposed it and resisted it and been silent on it. And I never want us to forget a Democratic majority delivered those victories to us. Yep. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any, are there any other questions? Yes, Jeff. Hey, Gail, thanks for, hey, for being here, good to see you. Um, thank, and thanks for running for this, um, this seat. I think we, uh, I think you give us a good shot to finally take this back after a hundred billion years of not having it. <laughs> <At> um, <least. laughs> so I'm, I'm actually wondering, so the Secretary of State does more than elections. I'm wondering yeah. what like really sexy ideas you have about like corporate registration and the archives and just, you know, all the other stuff other than elections. Yeah, uh, thanks for asking. So uh, for those who might not know who watch this video, the Secretary of State registers all corporations, <clears throat> excuse me, nonprofits, as well as charitable foundations here. And they have to be going concerns and compliant with state law. I'd like to bring some of my expertise in looking at how the private sector works and how the public sector and the nonprofit sector works to addressing these issues because some nonprofits are couching themselves as educational institutions when they are in fact political propaganda units. Um, the second thing that the Secretary of State does is the archives. I'm a major history fanatic. I am a member of History Link. I am on the Legislative Oral History Committee and Archives Committee for the bipartisan statutory committees that we have. And I'm gonna do some work on getting the oral histories done of democratic leaders in this state, because for the last 20 Ten years, seconds. we've written books and done a whole bunch of archives of all of the Republican legislators. You would think that the democratic had, majority had not been in control for 22 years in this state. So I'll be doing some of that work as well. I look forward to that one. Thanks, Gail. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Hannah. Hi. Um, I was hoping to ask hey. about, uh, you had mentioned um, that you wish that you had run in 2016, and so you're running now. So I'm curious, and then you also mentioned your what you were doing in the legislature around voting rights um, and, and other voting access type things. So I'm curious if you could tell us, like, if you could enumerate some of that work that you've done in your role in the last couple of years, like yeah. since you know you considered running, and then now, um, now so I, I never considered running in 2016. But knowing now what I know about what was happening in 2016, we have lost three and a half years to deal with election security, and that is why I'm really, I I was determined to make the race this year because I I declared in December, right? I. I knew that for three years she had not been taking action to protect our elections and to protect our cybersecurity systems and to deal with the national risk that we were going to face it again. She had a platform and she did not use it. And that is why I have been working on election security, elections funding, cybersecurity assurance, creating incident command structures for uh, if we have a cybersecurity attack on our other critical infrastructure in this state, including the all of the telecommunications infrastructure. I've been trying to get digital infrastructure out to rural communities. Um, I've been doing a ton of that work with my colleagues. And, and then we have done a lot on voting rights and expanding voting access. And now it's time to figure out how to turn that voter access into turnout of the vote. And that is what I am going to focus on this year. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Everybody's moving. 
Jason. Um, our uh, mail-in vote is so dependent on the United States uh, Postal Service. Yep. And this administration just seems to want to privatize it, and um, we don't want it privatized. Do you have any no, comments or statement that, you know, once elected, that we can advocate for the United States Postal Service to get the funds they need to do their job? I am already advocating for that. Uh, my digital fundraising effort is really pushing to protect the U.S. Postal Service. Over 100,000 veterans are workers in the Postal Service. It's one of the biggest unions in the country. And that is why Republicans for 30 years, under starting with Reagan, have been trying to privatize the U.S. Postal Service. They want another FedEx and they want another UPS. They don't want a public service. I have been fighting privatization of the Federal Aviation Administration, of the internet, and now of the US Postal Service, I will and privatization of public lands. I've been doing that for 13 years and I'll do it again for the Postal Service. But in the meantime, our backup plan, and when you go up back into special session, I will fight for this, is to do really substantial expansion of ballot drop boxes uh, so that we have a backup plan in the event that Trump decides to put the Postal Service on strike. Because he could do that. He actually has the power to do it. Thank you very much for the answers to that. <clears throat> um, well, we are very close to time. Would you like to go ahead and give a minute wrap up to the people viewing this video? Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone. I would love the endorsement of the 36 district Democrats for this race. I'm running against a two term incumbent. I'm running statewide and I'm at home in Ballard for the foreseeable future. I never imagined running a statewide race where I couldn't go out and meet people, where I couldn't go face to face and convince voters that it's time for a change. It really is time for a change. And it's not about whether Republicans are good or bad. It's that that office is far more significant to this state than any attention we have paid to it. We take it for granted that our elections will happen. She tried to cancel the elections that are happening today, April 28th. She asked the governor to cancel these elections. No secretary of state should ever say, I'm not gonna vote in a presidential primary, and no secretary of state should ever be able to say, cancel an election. No, we are Americans and we vote. And that is how our voice is heard. That is how our rights are exercised. I will do everything in my power to turn the tide and make sure people turn out and vote. Thanks so much and I'd love your support. Thank you.